So in uh, the spring of 1992, uh, there had been a shooting in Allerton. Uh, an African-American man was sitting in his yard with some other friends, um, and a group of whites drove by on the back of a truck, and they just randomly sh shot, and uh, he got killed. And um, there was a trial, and the young white guy was found guilty, but he was sentenced to probation which created a huge uproar. And so on the Sunday that there was a march and demonstration in the city of Fort Worth to protest uh, that shooting, there was also a meeting at Grace United Methodist Church in Allerton where Luther Henry, who was the district superintendent, was coming to inform the congregation of their new pastor. That new pastor was going to be a white female. Uh, I was angry, upset, but I attended the march, and then I went to the church and um, kind of walked out, out of the church uh, in disbelief of some of the things I heard. I actually called my grandmother that night and said, we're getting a new pastor. And um, she said, you are? I said, yeah. And she said, uh, well, we are too. We don't know who we're getting yet, but we hope and pray we get a good one. So who are you getting? I said, we're getting a white woman. And she said, well, you must pray and ask the Lord to be with you, she said. But you can't leave the church for two reasons. Well, what are those reasons? Well, she's white and she's a woman. And if you leave because she's white, then what kind of Christian does that make you? And if you leave because she's a woman, well, you're a woman and you're about to go into ministry too. And would you want people leaving the church because you're gonna be their pastor? Uh, fast forward, it's 2002, I'm about to be ordained as an elder. Got a call from the district superintendent, and that church was Burleson. And he uh, said, I'm gonna come out and, and you know, I want you to meet me there, I'm gonna get you seated. And what I appreciate with, about that very first meeting with the SPR is that we had some uh, frank conversation. Uh, they were asking questions like, are you gonna be comfortable here? We are all white church. And um, they say, well, we don't, they, we don't have many black people in Burleson. Maybe there are some that live across the railroad track. I don't know. I don't think we have black people in Burleson. Are you going to be okay with that? But one of the things I had started even at Benbrook uh, was African American, Celebration of African American History Month with a musical. And, you know, I was young in the ministry. Uh, so I didn't think there'd be anything about a conflict. It was not until afterwards this lady came up to me. She said, you know, when you started talking about having this musical, I didn't know. I didn't know how that was going to go. I didn't know because that was Marcy Barty. She said, uh, because, you know, this is Burleson. And uh, I didn't know. But she said, you know, this was really went well. It went, it was nice. Part of what also with the African-American musical that made it successful was the willingness of Quinn Gibson to bring his choir which was a very good choir, uh, St. James, uh, to participate at uh, Benbrook and at uh, Burleson. Uh, and then you could have dialogue. I mean, I remember the music directors and members from the choir say, how can African-American choir, how, why don't they have music? We, all, we always sing and we have music. And uh, the choir directors are saying, yeah, you need to learn your music so you don't have to have the music, but African-American choirs are singing without the music. And so those are opportunities to begin to have conversation. Music opened the heart. You know, um, music is simple, right? Movies, movies is another thing. Go in the movies. Uh, there was a movie about the Tuskegee Airmen and taking a class, let's, hey, let's go see this movie. And you can come back and you can have the conversation. A segregated uh, military, you know, so those are things that give you venues to open the door to have those deeper conversations. Do as much as that as possible, like go to movies, invite movies or go to plays or, you know, it's, it's not, then it's not just you, it's like, okay, it's a starting place. Bible study, we, uh, we did a Bible study, God in television, but it was written by African-Americans. So you can introduce things like that and then it, it helps you have different looks at the world. Now, when I was leaving Burleson, uh, that's when I learned more. I got a letter from one gentleman saying, you know, you've, you've done well here, thank you. Uh, he said, I didn't know. He said, because 
Burleson, we grew uh, from White Flight. And he talked about people from East Fort Worth moving to Burleson after the days of uh, the whites from East Fort Worth after the days of integration. But see, none of those things came up like in conversation. Uh, but when I was leaving, uh, there were people who seemed to be more frank talking about things. Uh, so from Burleson, I went to St. Stephen. St. Stephen was different because they, there already was African Americans in that congregation. So it was totally different experience than in any of the others. After St. Stephen's, I went to Wellspring. That was a, 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 an appointment that uh, I was struggling to accept. Um, and so I called a friend of mine up in, uh, she was in uh, Kansas at that time. And uh, she asked a question that I never thought. She said, what scares you about this appointment? I said, scared, nothing scares me. She's like, yeah, something's scaring you about this appointment. I said, no, I don't want to go to a town that's like, you look at the look at the website. There are no black people, she said. And you're calling me and I'm serving in Kansas, in Podoc, Kansas, and you're asking me and I'm from the Bahamas. But when I got there, uh, yes, Wellspring was, uh, there were no African-Americans part of the congregation. What they were saying is, we want to be more diverse. We want to be more diverse. They were saying that when I walked in the doors. Uh, and when we had our first meeting to talk about, well, what, is that, what does that mean? Now they had a, uh, a slogan, all are welcome, all accepted. As a person of color, I hear that in terms of race and ethnicities. But later on, after my first year, I learned that part of uh, Wellspring uh, DNA in their founding is that they also wanted to be accepting to the LGBT uh, community. They just was willing to talk about hard conversation, any, and, and you know, just, they would say to me, because uh, I was struggling to find someone to do my hair. Uh, you're in Georgetown. There, there, there were no African American beauty shops, and really just a few in Austin. So here I was. I, I had my per hair permed at that time. I'm driving from um, Georgetown to Dallas to see my stylist, and it's like this can't keep going. I had ladies, white women, going in the in the, in the grocery stores, they would see African-American women and they would say, excuse me, where'd you get your hair done? It's like, really? You had, you did, you did. And they did do that. The other thing though, they would say, we we, wanted, we, we were just concerned about how, where you're gonna find community. Um, we, we know we know you're here, we know there are cultural things and we don't have that. But, uh, you know, they, we just really could have some, some really hard conversation, especially if I was at Wellspring when President Obama got elected. And, um, uh, you know, Williamson County is pretty much red and um, some hard feelings there, um, some anger there. But we had conversation. Uh, not everybody on the same page with those conversations. But you, you have to, some one person was really, really angry and I didn't let me know it. Uh, but, you know, that's part of a changing world. My grandma used to tell me, if you're gonna live in this world, you gotta learn how to get along with people. And I'm like, well, what other world I'm gonna live in? She's like, that's it, there is no other world. So you need to learn how to get along with people. The, the greatest transformation happens as you're engaging with people. I believe the church, like that better world, uh, that beloved community that I want to see realized in my lifetime, or at least be a part of trying to ring about, I think the only way that happened is through the church. And that's because of what, what coming to the realization and full understanding who God is and who Jesus Christ is in my life. So I feel it has to, has to be the church.